To mention Radio Ham, there's a good chance that Tony Hancock's classic sketch will come to mind. Amateur radio enthusiasts have never quite lived it down. But this weekend in Chelmsford, the Hams are transmitting a serious message to the world. They're celebrating the birthday of Marconi, the father of wireless. Our own Ham, Kim Riley, joins us live from Chelmsford. Thank you very much indeed. Well, this is the San San Sanford Mill Museum, I should say. This is the Marconi Hut. Doesn't look much, does it, actually? N not very unprepossessing. But in fact, you know, this was where the history of radio broadcasting all began back in 1922 in a field at nearby Rickle. And this weekend, the hut is full of radio amateurs, like Colin Page here. Now, I can hear Morse code, Colin. Indeed. I thought Morse code was on its way out. Oh, not in the amateur radio, certainly. Um, before we were allowed to transmit worldwide, we need to take a technical exam and do a Morse code test as well. So, so you're sorry. keeping Morse code pleasantly alive. Let's look at some of the Morse keys you've got here. Look at this one. Lovely stuff. Nice to see it still being used. Thanks very much, Colin. On the wall here, we've got a, a very historic photo, actually. This is a concert being broadcast from this very hut. It was called 2MT, 2 Emma Tock, back in 1922. Now, 75 years on, come on with me, 75 years on, they've recreated it. You know, we've still got the same piano here, and indeed, the same pianist still playing the same chords. And let's see if he's going to do his stuff now. That hand should rise magically any moment now, and it isn't, is it? Press that button again. Here we go. Right. <laughs> Have another go. Come on. He's supposed... Ah, oh, look, there we are. Up goes the hand. They don't play them like this anymore, you know. There we are. Beautiful stuff. Absolutely wonderful. Second attempt. I knew it wouldn't work. It worked perfectly in rehearsal. Jeff, um, obviously the hut. We know about the hut and how it started. What happened to it since? Well, the Marconi Company used it for another 40 years as a, as a laboratory, and then it moved to a local school, and it was used for 30 years as a sports hut. And uh, then you got hold of it? Then we moved it here. We're very keen to preserve it as a reminder of Chelmsford's role in the development of the birth of broadcasting. Smashing. Thank you very much. Let's come across and meet, because this weekend they've got a, a marathon 24-hour session going on here when the radio amateurs call the world. And this is Brian. What luck are you having, Brian? Not very much, I'm afraid. Conditions are not as good as we could have hoped for. What message are you giving them if you do receive anybody? Well, we're reminding them that this is celebrating Marconi's birthday and the centenary of the commencement here in Chelmsford Hall Street of the Marconi Company. Righty ho. Well, look, let's just show you this. This is the, what they call the QSL card they send out. This is actually to, to confirm a contact, and the great man Marconi is very prominent on it. Now, of course, back in the old days of broadcasting, what did you have? You had one of these crystal sets. Pick up my microphone. It's actually on here, I think, but the crystal set. And what we actually had here, see if we can pick anything up at all. Oh, I can hear something. See if you can. Can you hear anything at all? Yes, we can. Apparently we can. That's the stuff. This is um, my mate Doris. And um, Doris loves this program. It's the only program she could get in 1922. Although I have to say she is, she is just a little bit of a stirrer. Never mind. From uh, the Marconi hut at Chelmsford. Back to you in the studio. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. You never get those things to work when you want them to. Let's have the weather, Victoria.